Okay, so I'm going to explain the inside outside edge so that you can understand what I'm talking about when I talk about the Explorer. If you look like at this instrument shank, if this here was somebody's arm, this was the elbow, this was the hand, and you're kind of looking like this, right? This would be the outside of the arm and this would be the inside of the arm. Do you see that? If somebody was standing like this? So their elbow, the elbow is sticking out. Yes, I see that. Yeah, so now if I say inside edge or outside edge, that has some meaning. So we're gonna talk about exploring. And here's the explorer. This would be the outside edge and this would be the inside edge. Outside, inside. So when you go to explore a posterior tooth, I would suggest always starting on the mesial to see which end is correct. Don't sometimes go on the distal, sometimes go on the mesial. Always do it consistently the same way so you start to see the same thing every time. So I'm gonna put this tip facing the interproximal direction on the mesial and say, is this the right end? If it's the right end, the handle will be going out of the mouth the correct way with the terminal shank and the bend in it pointing distally. So this is the correct end. So I'm gonna show you what the incorrect end hold, would look like. And just hold there for a second. I'm gonna zoom in. So that is the correct position. This is the correct position because that bend in the shank points distally as opposed to the wrong end, if I'm on the mesial and the handle is going out of the mouth like that, do you see how the bend points forward towards the anterior? That would be incorrect. So I'm going to go back to this end. That bend points distally, and I checked it on the mesial every time, and so we've got it correct. Now, when you explore though, you start on the distal. We're gonna start on the distal facial line angle, and we're going to explore into the interproximal area this way. So the tip always points towards the direction you're moving towards. I'm gonna to start at the line angle and end up in the contact area. And I'm gonna get up on my fulcrum so that the terminal shank is fairly parallel to this distal surface there that I'm exploring. In other words, I wouldn't wanna fall over and have the terminal shank like this. That's not parallel. So I'm gonna get up on my fulcrum I'm going to get that tip right on that line angle and I wanna keep that last millimeter or two of the tip on the tooth, which means as I go into the interproximal, I'm going to make a rocking stroke here to feel the surface, feel the surface. I have to turn my, my fulcrum. It's called, we call it pivoting. Okay, I'm losing you, so. Okay, we're gonna pivot. I'm pivoting. I'm pivoting. Pivoting means you're driving with your fulcrum, but you know we learn to drive with our fulcrum by rocking with the probe and, or rocking up and down with our fulcrum, but there's another way to drive with your fulcrum and it's called pivoting. And it's when you turn around on your fulcrum finger, okay? So that you're not, so that I'm keeping that tip on the tooth the whole time. So as I walk from the line angle to the contact area, First of all, the terminal shank is parallel, the tip is pointed towards the contact area, and I'm going to rock on my fulcrum, but as I go in, the tooth turns. So I have to keep that tip on there by pivoting my fulcrum. Do you see me turning? Okay, I'm gonna come around the other side of your head. Okay, so I'm on the line angle here with the tip. I'm making nice, long, fluid strokes, but I'm turning my hand. I'm turning my fulcrum to just match as that convexity comes out on the distal surface or as the, the contour of the tooth. So I'm rocking on my fulcrum to make nice long fluid strokes and I'm turning my, my fulcrum pivoting to keep the last couple millimeters on that tooth and I am up on my fulcrum and when I rock, I'm rocking mesial and distal with the handle. Do you see how the handle is going mesial and distal? When I am on the distal surface, I have to make sure that I'm rocking the correct direction. 
and the correct direction is the handle goes New Zealand distal. Okay. okay, so now I've done the distal surface. Again, I start on the distal facial line angle, terminal shanks parallel, I'm up on my fulcrum, and I'm gonna make nice long fluid strokes and feel up all the way to the base, to the top, base to the top, rocking on my fulcrum until I've explored underneath the contact, take it out, and now I'm gonna roll around, I'm gonna just literally roll the instrument so that I end up on the outside edge. I'm switching sides of the blade and I turned the direction of the tip because we always want to, the direction of the tip to face the direction we're moving and now I'm gonna to move towards the mesial. And I'm going to start exploring the buckle surface. And do you see how I've changed my rock direction? My rock direction is now going buckle lingual when I'm on the buckle. Now, do you see how, because I wanna get, you know, that whole buckle surface, if I'm up like this, I'm gonna run into the top teeth so the tip is pointed a little bit more down than it would be on the mesial or distal. Do you see how it's just facing towards the gums? That's okay. You're not like this, mm -hmm. but you're just angled a little bit and you're doing more of an oblique stroke. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but what happens when I get to the mesial, if I don't adjust and I turn that corner, look at the shank, it's falling over. Mm -hmm. So I have to make a big adjustment on that mesial surface when I turn the corner there. Mm -hmm. And there's several things to think about when you do make that adjustment. So the first thing I was talking about is, well, the tip is kind of facing down and I'm rocking this way. I've got to, again, pivot, but I can only pivot so far. Sometimes it's a little bit of a strain, so I'm rolling too. Do you see how I'm rolling my fingers? Do you see my fingers moving? So I'm rocking buckle lingual. I'm coming around the corner. I turn, I pivot, I roll, I rock up on my fulcrum, and now I change my rock direction. Okay. And now you're rocking <laughs> mesial and distal mesial again. distal again. So the rule is when you're exploring the mesial or distal surface, the handle always goes mesial or distal. When you're exploring the buckle or the lingual surface, the handle goes buckle lingual. And why is that important? Because if I was to go buckle lingual on the mesial surface, what is the tip doing? It's not going from base to ap to coronal, base to coronal, base to coronal in a nice sequence like I'm mowing the lawn. It's swiping and I'm missing the base of the pocket. So the handle direction is an indication that you're making the tip go in the right direction so that you don't miss any area. So I'm gonna explore once more in a little bit faster, more smooth, fluid motion so you can see what I'm doing as it more naturally would happen. So now I'm gonna start on this premolar. I'm on the, I'm on the distal facial line angle. I am on the inside edge. The, I am up on my fulcrum. The terminal shank is parallel and the tip is facing towards the contact. And I'm going to start to rock on my fulcrum to feel that surface. I'm pivoting my fulcrum to turn and match to keep the last one to two millimeters on the tooth. When I'm done and I've explored under the contact real well, I'm gonna stop, take it out. I'm gonna roll it around, switch sides of the blade. Now I'm on the outside edge and the tip is pointed towards the mesial. Now I change my rock direction, buckle lingual, buckle lingual explore on the buckle. Oop, now I'm on the mesial facial line angle. I've got to adjust. I'm going to stop. I'm going to rock up on my fulcrum to get more parallel. I'm going to roll the handle, pivot a little bit, face towards that mesial contact, and now I'm going to change my rock direction again to mesial distal. And how far are you going interproximally? I am going far enough that I know I've covered that interproximal surface. So a little, probably to the outer lingual aspect of the contact, I would guess. Okay. So, so a little more than 50%. A little more than 50%, just to make sure you don't miss anything in there on that contact. You're kind of double checking yourself. What I see a lot of students want to do is they want to plant their finger in one position and only roll around the entire tooth like that. They don't With learn your to turn. With your thumb and forefinger, you're not using your fulcrum to, 
to turn to, because they're not driving with their fulcrum. And what happens is my grasp collapses. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, and, and maybe not so much in this area, but like other areas, it's really important to pivot and, and you need to develop that. So we're going to, you, you know, drive with your fulcrum. So the other thing that students will want to do is as they're on the buckle and they're going to go around to the mesial, they're going to stay down here. They don't know how to rock up on their fulcrum mm -hmm. and get parallel. And I'll say, oh, you need to be more parallel. And they'll do this. <laughs> oh, nope, not a good grasp. Nope, nope, nope. They got to swing up on their fulcrum and get that parallel. Okay, so I'll say, oh, we got to get parallel. Don't cheat with the handle. No, no, no. Go back and go swing up with your wrist a little bit and get up on your fulcrum. The other thing is they will... Students tend to want to use the entire blade to explore. So look at the mesial surface here. I'm using the entire blade. I can't tell one thing from another. You've got to use the tip so you're only feeling with the last millimeter of the tip. So I can say, oh, that little bump is over here and not over here. So you're using the side of the tip, not the pointy part. Yeah, I'm not tip. going like mm -hmm. this, but uh -huh. I'm using the last one millimeter or two millimeters of the tip and it should look like that. Do you see where the uh -huh. shank? The terminal shank, when I'm on the mesial of 29, mm -hmm. the terminal shank is almost equally between 29 and 28. Mm -hmm. But when you're not rolled because you didn't use your fingers to do that subtle little rolling mm -hmm. motion, then the shank looks like it's over on the same tooth I'm exploring, like 29. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So one of the visuals would be, okay, I've rolled just enough to keep that terminal tip one to two millimeters on the tooth. And you can see that the shank has then been rolled a little bit more towards kind 28. kind of out towards 28. Yes, yeah, so, so that's a visual. And on the mesial, it is on this lower right, it's really hard to pivot because your, your arm can't swing. So I do tend to roll a little bit more on the, on the mesial, but on the distal, I pivot a little bit more. It's easier. Whenever I can pivot, it's better than, you know, rolling around and losing your grasp. You want to drive with your fulcrum. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> But if, I'm, if I can turn on my um, fulcrum to drive, it's so much better for my grasp rather than just rolling around. And, and mm -hmm. so on the distal, you can pivot quite easily. But on the mesial, sometimes it's, you, can, you can't swing any farther. So sometimes I do roll a little bit more than I pivot right there. Okay. So um, that's the explorer on the lower that's right. That's the lower right.